afternoon, everybody. I'm Shannon Hayes from Sapbush Hollow Farm, where we aim to nourish and restore family, community, and planet. And in the aim of restoring community and building healthier neighbors, we are going to be making lamb, rustic lamb and white bean stew for the cafe special for this Saturday. And what I have here is the start of it. These are the beans. This is a mix of different white beans. And they are soaking in hot water right now with a little bit of yogurt in the water. This acidifies it and helps to neutralize the phytates in the beans. And that means it makes them a little bit less gassy and makes more nutrients available to us as we eat them. If you want to come in Saturday and taste what we're making, be here before 1 p.m. because we're closing early on Saturday. Otherwise, you can find the recipe in my cookbook, uh, Long Way at a Little, on page 198. Shameless self-promotion. This is a dish that harkens back to European traditions where I often see, typically in French cooking, the flavor is actually built in the pot, not necessarily with seasonings, but with ingredients that you actually dirty the pot with and then season the pot. So one of the most important ingredients in this lamb and white bean stew are these bacon ends. These are ends taken from the pork bellies that my dad smokes on the farm. And I'm going to add those to the pot first and let them start to sweat down and then use the bacon fat to sear the lamb and season the lamb. So I'm just gonna get that started. Okay, so as you can see here, we've rendered the fat out of a lot of this bacon. And we have a nice pool of fat here in the pan, and that's what we're gonna use to sear the meat. So I'm gonna remove the bacon before it gets too burnt because it'll have more opportunity to cook later. And then I'm gonna to go to searing the shanks. And then I'm going to use bacon ends throughout as I sear all of these vegetables before I put the soup together. The next thing I'm gonna do is season the lamb shanks. And I always season before I sear and my salt to pepper ratio is always two parts salt and one part pepper. So I'm gonna mix that up. And you'll notice here, a lot of times people like to use coarse salt with meat, but if it's gonna be seared, uh, coarse salt's gonna flake right off. So I prefer to use a fine grain salt. And now I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the outside of the meat. Okay. Going. At this point, I'm only seasoning one side of the lamb shanks and then I'm gonna put it in the pot to sear on the seasoned side down. And while the shanks are in the pot, that's when I'm gonna season the other side. I'm gonna set these shanks in this hot pan with the seasoned side down. And I wanna make sure to get good browning that I do not crowd the pan. So I'm only gonna put four shanks in at a time. The good gauge that I always use is I like one inch of space around all the meat. And I'm just going to let that sear for two to three minutes until it's good and brown, and then I'll flip it over. But while it's searing, I'm going to season the back side of the meat. When Bob comes in later, he's going to say this is a dirty pan, but I call it a well-seasoned pan because all that looks dirty in there is actually building flavor, as I talked about before. So what I'm going to do next is sear these different vegetables that are going in the soup individually so they can add to the base flavor of the pan, but also so that the vegetables can pick up a nice caramelization. So we're ready to put everything together. We've got the beans. I pre-cooked them for 90 minutes this morning. And I have the seared lamb shanks, I have the seared vegetables and the bacon, the bone broth, some thyme for seasoning and some bay leaves. And I'm just gonna add it all to the pot and simmer it. You'll notice the recipe on page 198 of Long Way on a Little says to use leftover lamb leg diced. That's perfectly fine. But we are taking this from the shanks instead. So you can make that choice. If 
you've watched any of my other videos, then you know that one of my favorite ingredients in these cafe soups and stews is thyme. And yes, the herb thyme went into this, but also just the number of hours. So I was in here yesterday braising this soup, and then what I did is I chilled it overnight to let the flavors build up. And now I have this chilled solid mass. And what I wanted to show you is something that you might think is unseemly if you make this at home, and that's the layer of fat that congeals on the surface. So you see underneath I have a good solid gelatinous bone broth, and then I have this layer of fat that's over it. And um, I don't really like the mouthfeel of that in my soups, so before I heat them up, I actually scrape that fat off the top. And I won't succeed at getting all of it off, but I can reduce it greatly. I've gotten enough fat off here to satisfy me, so the next thing I'm gonna do is sift through the stew to find these lamb shanks. And I cooked them yesterday until they were fork tender. That means that the meat flakes easily with a fork. And I'm just gonna pull those out, and I'm going to take this meat off the bone and put it back, cut it up, and then put it back into the soup. Okay, so I've got all those lamb shanks picked off the bone, and I'm just gonna add them back to the soup. And that's all that we need to do until Saturday. That lamb and that stew will just heat it up on Saturday morning and then when we dish it out to serve it we'll garnish it with roasted red peppers and diced black olives and local goat cheese and it'll be delicious.